Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Lee. In my previous videos, I've shown you two OIDC provider. One is Keyclaw and the other one is Microsoft Azure AD. In today's video, I'm going to show you another cloud-based identity management platform. It's called Okta. Let's get started. First of all, let me open my browser. And then go to my blog. This one. As you can see on this blog post, I've got screenshots for um, different steps. If you need to have a reference in the future, you can come back to my blog post and go to different sections um, to, um, to follow the instructions. Um, so the first step of using Okta, of course, is to um, register an account. After verifying your email address and logging the first time, you'll be taken to this page. You should notice that this is your special domain which you can use um, to access your applications. If you want to use a different domain, you can go to customization, go to domain. Um, for this um, developer account, you can change the, this domain to your e domain uh, for free. Um, so the first thing I want to do is to create a few users and group. As you can see here, I've created two users. One is admin user, this one, the other one is um, read-only user. I've also created two groups here um, for demo admin and demo read only for these two um, users. Now let's create an application. Once you've got this page, let's click create app integration, select OIDC, and I'm going to demo native application because it has more flows that I want to show you. Next, let's call this app as my demo app and um, the flows I want to show is resources on a password and refresh token. That's about it. And for the signing redirect URL, let's use localhost callback. I can delete this for now as it's optional. And for the assignment, so Okta has this a fine grind access control. So you can allow everyone in your organization to access this application. And for me, I'm going to limit access to my um, demo group only, demo admin and demo read only. Let's save. Now the application has been created and uh, we can see here the client authentication is none. Um, we are going to create a client secret because um, one of the flow, which is the um, password flow, require a client secret. Uh, let's come here and we just need to save it. Okay, we've got a client secret here. Now you should be able to use this application with the default authorization server, but I want to show you one more step, which is to create a custom uh, authorization server. So we don't use the default one, we want to create a new one. So for the name, I will call it demo. And for the audience, I will just follow the default audience and call it API um, and then demo. And for the description, it will be, this is a demo, a S, save. Now we have it. We need to go to access policies, add policies. What this policy does is to, um, again, fine grind the access control. So I want to uh, limit the access to these authorization servers by my demo app only. So let's call it um, demo app um, um, authorization server, whatever name you want to give it. And then the description will be, I'll just copy this one here. I'll just demo app or come here, following client, we can go to demo. Okay, my demo, it will find it, create a policy. Once the policy is created, we need to add a rules to it to tell this authorization server what are the grants we want to use by this application. For this case, I just allow all. And you can see there are more here. Um, we don't care, we just create a rule. Okay, that's all done. So we can come back to scopes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a custom scope called group. This display phrase will be to add um, groups claim to ID token. Um, I just copy the same here. 
user consent, I don't care for now, and for the default scope. What this means is, um, do you want to add this scope when um, this server is being called? I don't want to do that. I want to make this scope as optional. Um, and then include in public metadata uh, means uh, whether or not you want to publish this scope onto your public um, directory, which I don't want to. So let's just create. Once this is created, we can add a custom claim groups to this group claim. Let's come here, add claim. What's the name? Groups. So sometimes a user might have multiple groups. That's why we use plural here. Um, we want to add this one to add, um, ID token and value type will be groups and I will be start with demo. Um, so what this means, if you still remember, I created two um, um, groups um, for my two users, they all start with demo. So in this case, the other groups, for example, there will be a group called everyone would not be added to the tokens. All right. So I want to add this claim to the group scope specifically. You can do that, then create. All right. That's all done. So let's go back to authorization server. So this is our issuer URL. If we go here, go to well, known open ID configuration. So this is our directory um, information here. It's got issuer authorization endpoint JWK, which means this is a new key for this authorization server only. Um, so you don't need to worry about uh, using one default um, uh, authorization server for all of your applications. Okay. So let's go back to um, our blog post. Um, I have prepared a insomnia collection again. So we just uh, install that. Run, opened. Okay, so this is insomnia. You will see this page. And let's click OK. Done. OK, come here. So we just add some environment variables. Let me just enlarge this page a little bit. For the issuer part, let's go back to our page. So the issuer is um, this one. Copy issuer. What's the client ID? Client ID is the application ID, which is here. But we just go inside, click the copy button paste, client secret, copy, paste, done. Okay, so let's have a try. So let's say for um, authorization code here, let's go to all of two and we click fetch tokens. All right, I've got this uh, Okta pop-up window. So I'm going to enter my username, admin.demo for fun. And the password, I have no idea what that is, but I'm going to copy that from here and go back to my window, sign in. Boom, now we've got a refresh token, we've got an ID token, we've got an access token. Let's take a closer look here. Um, I have requested open ID um, scope and the offline access here. All right. All right, let's go to the next one, which is the password flow. Let's go to admin at demo for fun and value. Uh, it doesn't matter. I will just show you here. I will change it later. Um, send. As you can see here, I've got a refresh token, which is coming from the off offline access um, uh, scope. Uh, we've got an ID token here. Let's copy that. Open my terminal. Let me enlarge it a little bit. So you can see here, I've got a preferred username. I've got name, I've got email address. That's coming from the email and profile. So if I delete all of these, send again, I don't have the refresh token and my ID token will have limited information. So 
So you can see I don't have an email address, I don't have a name, I don't have a uh, preferred username as well. If you still remember, I created a group claim, right? So let's just try to add that. Send. And we've got the new token. Let's copy. You can see this is my group's claim, right? So that is the reason I want to use group as a uh, custom scope and then optional custom scope. So if I need the group claim, I put it here in my request. If I don't need it, I simply don't use it. Uh, if you don't want to use Insomnia, but you should, all right? Uh, you can still copy uh, here as curl command and we can come back to our terminal, paste that and you've got a token here, right? Um, I, you can't do that for authorization code because I don't have anything here. So that's why on my blog post, I've got a authorization code uh, flow uh, with all the curl commands here. So if you really need to use curl uh, for testing, uh, you can just copy from here as well. All right, let, next I want to show you the refresh token. So I've got all these scopes. Let me put it in, then send it. And then when we refreshed it, we should be able to have the same scope. So if I don't um, have one of the scope, let's say profile, and do that, I'm going to get a warning because I've got more scope for the refresh token, which is not on the original request, right? So um, make sure that when you're using the um, refresh token, uh, the scope need to be a match. Now let's try introspection. So you can see it is working and revoke token. It's kind of self-explanatory. I, I, I will not cover it here. So for the user info, uh, you just pass in a token here and you should get, get the um, user information here, right? The email here. For client credential flow, because my application doesn't support this flow, I can't demo to you but um, you can go to this application page, um, create a new application, um, for example, web application, next, and you can see the client credential here, right? That's all I want to show you today. If you've got any questions, please feel free to leave your comments down below. I'll try my best to get back to you. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.